Benny's heart has got to be pure, Benny. Our hearts wasn't pure, so we got punished. Don't trouble your head about it. That's my department. I'm the brains of this outfit. It's the civilians. Right. They sell elephants to sailors, and sailors have to sell elephants back to them. Right. And for more money. Right. Well, brains and brawn, America's secret weapon. Here's a letter for you, handsome. For me? Yeah, some optimist thinks you can read. Excuse me. I understand you guys are in for life this time. Well, cheer up. Shouldn't be too long. We can wait. Hey, McGonagall. Yeah? How about investing a couple of bucks in a surefire proposition guaranteed to double your money? The well, last time I fell for that, you doubled your money. Be patriotic. Chance to reduce your bankroll and fight inflation. Holy smoke, I'm an heiress. You're a what? It says right here that I gotta go down to... Let me see that. Aunt Di left you 1,450 bucks. We'll sue. Sue what for? She was a civilian, wasn't she? Right. And what do civilians do? They sell elephants to sailors. Right. And what do sailors do? Sell them back again for more money. Right, 1,450 bucks. Chicken feed. Probably more like a million. They gyp this boy, but we'll fight him. We'll take it to the Supreme Court. If necessary, the United Nations. But, Benny, my aunt never had no million dollars. In fact, I don't hardly remember having no aunt. Who cares whether you had an aunt or not, as long as she left you the dough? It says right here, Tim has to go down to the bank in person to collect it. By the time you two guys get out of the brig to do it, the interest alone will be worth more than a million. Man's got a point. My compliments to the lieutenant and tell him we got to see him at once. Show him the letter. Aye, aye, sir. Anything else? Yeah, you owe me two bucks. But, Benny, it ain't right to sue my aunt when she's dead. Whose money is this anyway? Mine. All right, if you want to be selfish about it, I wash my hands of the whole responsibility. You're on your own. Lose a million dollars, see if I care. But, Benny, I don't want a million dollars. I just want the $1,450 my Aunt Gussie left me. Gussie? Did you say Gussie? That's what it said in the letter. I used to know a girl in Brooklyn named Gussie. Remember her? <laughs> Is this her? She don't look like nobody's aunt to me. I thought you'd recognize her. Tim, shake hands with a man who was almost your uncle. You used to know my Aunt Gussie back in Brooklyn? She used to carry my books home from school, and sometimes she used to carry me. We were practically as one, even less. If it hadn't been for the call of the sea and the draft board, who knows? And that money would have been mine. By all rights, it is. Yeah, but it says me in the letter. A mere technicality. Just the same, I'm going to be big about it. Not like some people I know. We're partners, aren't we? Right. Share and share alike? Right. I'm gonna cut you in for half. Gee, thanks, Benny. Think nothing of it. After all, what's money? Just about everything, that's all. But you gotta promise not to sue Aunt Gussie. Wouldn't be respectful her being dead and all. Listen, with my brains and 1,450 bucks, I'll run it into a million anyway. You gonna put your brain to work, Benny? Hear that? It's already working. I told them not to let him get down to the bank and collect that money without me. I knew somebody would sell him an elephant. You got any idea what kind of an elephant? Search me. I only work here. At ease. Now then, Lynn. It seems that your partner here, Seaman Donovan, has involved himself in a little trouble. What'd they sell on this time? Brooklyn Bridge? Okay, put it back and nobody be the wiser. Now, Benny, you know I didn't have enough money to buy Brooklyn Bridge. I bought a horse. A horse? Just what we needed. What do we want with a horse? Have we got a wagon? Who's gonna feed him? He probably eats like a horse, too. He's a racing horse. A racing horse? Not Man of War. We sold Man of War a couple of years ago to that cluck in Honolulu. Have you forgotten? Man of War? But he's dead. So is the cluck. Don't tell me you fell for that one after we did it ourselves. Now, now, let's not be hasty. His name is Little Aaron, and he's going to make a million dollars. What is he, a counterfeiter as well as a horse? Now, just a minute. Who sold him to you? I bought him at an auction. The guy who took me had a deposit on him. Took you is right. Don't tell me it was Buffalo Bill. I was Buffalo Bill, remember? And you were sitting bull that time in Pago Pago. Now, just a minute. It wasn't Buffalo Bill. It was a guy I met in a bar. And you know something, Benny? When I told him about Aunt Gussie, it turns out that him and her was old friends, too, just like you. You and him ought to get together sometime. Uh, just a minute! Attention! Uh, 
Now then, at ease. So, he was Aunt Gussie's friend, was he? That's right, Benny. He was almost my uncle, too. Attention! And stay at attention until I finish. The facts are these. Somebody swindled Seaman Donovan out of his inheritance. Naturally, we can't have our men made the victims of every bunkum artist who thinks the U.S. Navy is fair game. I want you to take charge of the matter. You'll get a five-day leave from the brig in which to accomplish it. When you have successfully concluded the mission, you'll be returned to the brig to stay out your sentence. Understand? Aye, aye, sir. Then get going. Now, one thing more. Sir? During the past 20 years in which it has been my unhappy lot to have you under my command, there have been entrusted to my keeping certain files. In this, for instance, is the entire report of the Battle of Wake Island. In this is the complete account of the destruction of a Japanese task force off the coast of Okinawa. And in this, the record of the sinking of the aircraft carrier Marasaku. But the rest of these cabinets, from top to bottom, is filled with nothing but the compiled data of your escapades, on land, on sea, and even in the air. But this time, I warn you, be careful, because there just isn't any more space. And now get out of here before I lose my temper. Aye, aye, sir. And you too. Yes, sir. As fine a bred animal as I've been associated with in my many years of laboring for the improvement of the breed. I recognize the horse by his four feet, but who are you? This is Mr. Garvey. He's going to train little Aaron. To do what? Swindle sailors? And for this, you had to tie him up, I suppose. What's the matter? Were you afraid of losing him? Everybody's after Mr. Garvey, Benny. That I can believe. I wouldn't have done it only on account of Aunt Gussie. Uh, uh, by a, a singular coincidence... You knew his Aunt Gussie. So did everybody in Brooklyn. Yes. Uh, we were childhood sweethearts. Now, you see, what did I tell you? Whose sweetheart was he? He's the jockey. Skeezer by name. Pleased to meet you. Did you ever ride before, or were you just appointed? I rode better nags than that one. That I can believe. What's he under contract for? Well, he's little Aaron's mascot. They call him the Pearl. You see, every horse has a mascot, like a battleship. The horse won't do a thing without him. Insisted on coming along. That's enough, boy. Don't pester him. His feet are sore. Yep. The boy exaggerates. You know they're sore. He can hardly walk. That's why he lost all them races. He got bad ankles. Hear that? Can't even walk. Well, certainly he can walk. How do you think he got here? Well, that's encouraging. At least we won't have to carry him back. Looks like we got stuck with a pot of glue. Maybe we can sell him to the post office. Benny! Don't even say that. How would you like to be turned into a pot of glue and be pasted all over things? Make me an offer. Don't despair, friend. There are other ways to make an indecent penny with a racing horse. His ankles get better if you don't run him. He needs to rest, that's all. He was born sickly because he was twins. Twins? You mean there's another horse just like him? Yes, sir. I was there when he was born. My pappy worked for Pop Sweet. He's dead now. And Mr. Cedric. He bought all Pop Sweet's horses. Little Aaron here, he was born twins. Are you sure about this boy? Uh-huh. Miss Jane, that's Pop Sweet's little girl. She took the other horse away and kept him. Do you realize what this means, Brother Benny? Two horses that look alike are fraught with possibilities. This may be greater than the discovery of gold in California. I don't get it. First you're going to turn him into glue, then you're going to turn him into gold. I didn't even know they made gold out of horses. Easiest thing in the world, son, especially when they're twins. Anybody know where to find Pop Sweet's little girl? She works in one of them drive-ins, waiting out automobiles. That, sir? I thought you said she was a little girl. Let's don't quibble over technicalities. Man the guns and stand by for action. Roger. Never mind, Roger. We'll handle it ourselves. Why, Pearl, what are you doing?
doing here? Howdy, Miss Jane. These two gentlemen, they bought Aaron at the auction. Seaman Lynn and Donovan at your service. And what service? You can call me Tim. And me, Benny, darling. What are you seeing me that's so attractive? Well, I'm awfully pleased to meet you, but I'm kind of busy right now. I told them about little Aaron being a twin, but they didn't believe me. So I brought him here to you. You tell them, Miss Jane. Why, they're twins, all right. And they have the same father and mother, too. Uh, well, <laughs> wouldn't you like to order something? Uh, I'm not supposed to talk to anybody unless I'm waiting on them and they're in an automobile. Who wants to talk? And who's got time to sit in an automobile and wait? Let me take that. That's awful heavy for anybody as pretty as you. Well, it's not heavy. They cook everything very light here. Allow me. What are you saving in this place? Cannonballs? Hey, you must be strong. Do you mind if I feel your muscles? Oh, I guess he wants his food. Would you mind feeling my muscles some other time? I'm kind of busy right now. Hey, what's the matter with the doll who took my order? You ought to be ashamed of yourself expecting a poor little girl to wait on you. You dropped something. Uh, uh, about that horse, you still got him? Oh, he's on a vegetable farm. I couldn't afford to support him, so I rented him out. Uh, he works for his keep, and he can eat all the vegetables he wants to. Only he doesn't like vegetables. He likes hay. Who doesn't? Especially if you're a horse. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing, but don't you think you'd better go now and meet me later when I'm through working? Yeah, we brought little Aaron with us. You brought him here? Yeah. But we don't serve horses. We just want you to take a look at him and see if he matches your horse. He's just around over here, Miss Jane. Yes, they both had bad ankles, poor babies. Hey, you, hot number, how about some chow? What do you have? We're all out of it. We're all out of that, too. I said hot number. You don't look like no hot number to me. You don't look so hot yourself. You've lost your looks. You've been worrying lately. I don't think we'd make a go of it. I'll send back your presents. Oh, a wise guy, eh? Want to make something out of it? Sure. <laughs> Brains and brawn, huh, Benny? Hey, he can't stay there. That space is reserved for cars. Come on! Police! We better get out of here. How about taking us to see little Shamrock? Right now? Can't think of a better time. They're very much alike. Two peas in a pod. And they look the same, too. What do we want with two horses? Ain't we got enough with one? The feet are fine. They're not thick anymore. I wonder by any chance can he run? Of course he can. He's got four legs. That's two more than you've got, you know. Huh? Uh, what is your plan, brother? I just don't seem to get it. All I'm going to do is sell little Aaron back to Bates Sedgwick with some help from little Shamrock. I still don't get it. Just keep your eyes open and you will. And if you don't stop interfering sooner than you expect. What are we going to be this time, Betty? Buffalo Bill or a couple of oil men from Texas? I haven't made up my mind yet. Yeah, well, whatever it is, please don't make me an Indian again. That time in Arizona, I almost got scalped. We leave little Aaron here with you. You'll never notice the difference. If you leave little Aaron, you gotta leave me too. Okay with you? Gracias, senor. I'll take the horse and the boy. Well, that's that. Millicent, cast your eyes upon a reformed racehorse owner. I know how much of a sacrifice it's been for you, Bert, but you'll be surprised how soon you'll forget it all. Anything you say. You don't like horse racing, so horse racing's on. Not a horse left. Now get in. We don't want you to be late on your very first day. No. Especially since you've just been employed as vice president. Yes. Vice president has such a nice sound to it. Yes. Struggling up from the top. Well, it never hurts to be engaged to the boss's daughter, darling. No. Tell me, uh, how many of these vice presidents have to die before I get to be president? Don't be silly. Remember, they're not going to marry me. Good 
morning, Miss Temple. Mr. Sedgwick. But this is Miss Brooks, your new secretary. I chose her myself. <laughs> How are you? Like it? Great. I uh, hope I can live up to it. You will. Now kiss me and I'll be off. Well, now what do I do? Answer it, silly. Me? Yes. Tell them to wait. Mr. Sedgwick will be with them in a few moments. A couple of important clients. You see? You already started. Sir, I can see at a glance that you all are a fair flower of the salad south. Didn't I all meet you last year at the Kentucky Derby? I've never been in Kentucky. That's funny, neither were we. We... were we? Hey, you just leave your name and address with a little lady here and I'll be in touch with you. I, I guess we were in Kentucky. Keep your ears and eyes open for anything or anybody that sounds like horse racing. And report to me at once. I understand, Miss Temple. Mr. Sedgwick, sir, I'm afraid we all have the advantage of you all, sir. I'm afraid you have. And if we haven't, we will have. Uh, won't you be seated? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, haven't we met somewhere before? What ship you on? Possibly at Saratoga? I was never on a Saratoga. Sir. Uh, allow me to introduce ourselves. I'm Colonel Forsyth. At your service, sir. And this is my associate, Mr. Blossom. No doubt you all have heard of us. We are a couple of Kentucky horse owners. Uh, from Kentucky. From Kentucky, don't say. Well, what can I do for you? If it has anything to do with horses, you're wasting your time. I've given up racing. Sold my stable, as you undoubtedly know. Well, that, sir, Mr. Sedgwick, is why we all here. You all, sir, have been the victim of a swindle. Is that so? My partner and me, Mr. Blossom, we had the honor of buying your horse, Little Aaron. You recollect? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. You was going to sell him to a glue factory. You was under the impression that your horse had bad ankles. Am I right? He did have bad ankles. His last and ten starts couldn't run worth a leg. Tricky your trainer, sir, to outfox you. We have that horse, sir, and his ankles are as sound as yours or mine. Your trainer was a Yankee rascal who was fixing to bamboozle you and buy him for himself. That's exactly what he was doing. He was fixing to bamboozle you, sir. Really? But now you've got him instead. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. When I learned of this deception, I said to my associate and my partner, Mr. Blossom. You all met Mr. Blossom? Oh, uh, I do, sir. How do you do? I said, Mr. Blossom, there's some things a hostman and a gentleman will not do. Yes, sir, that's exactly what he said. He said we should acquaint Mr. Sedgwick with the facts and give him an opportunity to buy his horse back, and that's what he said. Well, that's very generous of you, Admiral. Uh, Colonel. Oh, I beg your pardon, Colonel. I admire your ethics in the matter. Sailor's heart has got to be pure, ain't it, Benny? Huh? Yes, my ex-trainer was capable of a fast one like that, but I'm still willing to be open-minded. However, as I told you, I'm out of racing completely. If you had a horse that could do a mile and an eighth in 150 without pushing him, not even a little sure. You mean little Aaron? I don't believe it. Are you sure? Positive. Come see for yourself. Wait a minute. Has Miss Temple gone yet, Miss uh, Brooks? Yes, Mr. Sedgwick. She has, some time ago. It's not important. I'll phone her later. Thank you. All right. Where is he? At the Meadowbrook stable, waiting for us. Well, what are we waiting We're for? We're waiting for you, sir. All right. Mr. Sedgwick, sir, you are all in for the biggest surprise of your little old life. Let's shake it. And if you all don't mind, you all could drop that southern fly talk, Colonel.
I all won't be... I won't be back this afternoon. Amazing. This horse could barely walk a couple days ago. Worse than that, he couldn't even run, could he, Benny? Examine them closely, friend. You'll find the animal's legs as sound as a pre-war dollar. Hello, everybody. Hi, Janie. Janie, this is Bert Sedgwick. Meet Jane Sweet. How do you do? Are you, uh... Any relation to Pop Sweet? I don't know about that, but he was my father. Now, she was also his daughter. As strange a coincidence as ever came my way. And I'm surprised you can even say his name after what you did to all these wonderful horses. Well, I'm sorry. If my father were alive and could see what you've done to them, he'd turn over in his grave. Well, we had bad luck. I guess it takes more than luck to win a race. Takes a couple of fast horses. With no bad ankles. And an owner who can tell one horse from another. Ah, Colonel Forsyth and uh, Mr. Uh, Blossom, are we ready for the demonstration? Never mind the double talk. The Civil War's over. You're late. What happened to you? Oh, um, a little red tape at my bankers. Mr. Sedgwick, I believe, great admirer of yours, sir. How do you do? Our trainer, Doc Garvey. Shall we move over to the track and watch the workout? Yeah, great idea. Have you got the watch? Yes, here it is. It's been with me for years. I had to get it out of Hawk. That's what took me so long. Well, what's so special about it? It looks like any other watch to me. This one is talented. It stops at 150, no matter if it takes two hours to run the distance. We're in them because he's already hooked. I never saw anybody hooked better. He's looking at that horse like it was his sweetheart. He's also looking at Jane like she was his sweetheart. Yeah, and that part I don't like, so let's get him out of here. Uh, one last appeal. The answer is still no. Benny and me just want to get even, that's all. We don't want to do nothing crooked, do we, Benny? Well. Let's not go overboard. All right, son, let it go. It's off. And if he doesn't fall asleep on the way, we got a sail. He don't look sleepy to me. Come on. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Mm -hmm. Very wonderful. Look at him go! Champion form by George. He's running like someone's after him. Good boy! Not bad. 150 flat by George, and he wasn't even trying. Let me see it. Right here on the timepiece. You're not thinking of buying him, are you, Bert? Mellison, what on earth are you doing here? Because if you are, I'm going to be very disappointed. After telling me you'd given up all this nonsense. Oh, well, it's nothing like that. It's just that these gentlemen here were sporting enough to offer to straighten out a bit of dishonesty on the part of my former trainer. I uh, couldn't do less than listen, could I? I suppose not. Excuse me. Goodbye, Miss Sweet. I hope you'll give me the opportunity sometime of explaining. Better save your explanations for the horses. Not that it'll do any good. They won't understand you anyway. They don't speak English. Bird. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, it's too bad I've given up racing. You've got a great horse there. Almost had him. Where did she drop from? Far, I hope, and may she continue to. If they don't speak English, what do they speak? Horse, naturally. Never thought of that. He was flying at the finish. Say, he's all right for a farmhand. Did you see the way little Shamrock breezed around that track? Like a champion. I'm sorry I didn't put a bet on him. Yeah, but there weren't any other horses. That's why. By the way, what did he really do with him? Well, this watch only goes to 150. My Saint Ed, you see what it says there? It says he did it in 145 and 3 fifth seconds. Well, what does that mean? He's supposed to do it in 150. 
means we not only got a twin, we got a horse. I told you we had a horse and not an elephant. You see, you can always tell an elephant by the way he can remember things. Little Shamrock, he can't even remember his own name. It's a bonanza. It's a lucky thing that young man didn't take him. Now, we'll enter him as little Aaron. He'll start at 100 to 1, and we've got a clean-up. Train working, Benny? And how? We'll enter him, all right, but as little Shamrock. Oh, no, Brother Benny, anything but that. Well, why not? That's his name, isn't it? We'll put it in the papers that he's little Aaron's twin. But I thought he was. Well, they should be. They've got identical parents. I know a horse player when I see one, and I see one on Bite Sedgwick. He'll be around next day wanting to buy the nag, and we'll give him the same switch we planned for today. You mean we'll sell him back little Aaron instead of little Shamrock? Right. Any other questions? Yes, isn't there a simpler way to make a dishonest dollar? <laughs> All right, you guys, one at a time. Just remember, I haven't got my glasses on. You wouldn't hit a man without glasses, would you? Bearing in mind an oil well that turned out to be a dust well. If they could only run automobiles on dust, we'd have made a fortune. And a certain gold mine, which turned out to be located at Fort Knox. All I said was that there was a lot of gold there if we could only get at it. And a certain island in the South Pacific, which we bought. Only later, it turns out that this island has sunk to the bottom of the ocean in 1809. We were a little late, that's all. Lucky thing we weren't on it. Well, we just want to brief you, sailor. Show him, Chuck. See that, son? That's our entire well. We're betting it all on little Shamrock, that horse yarn we've been hearing about. Show him, Spud. That's an anchor, sailor. <laughs> it's mighty, mighty heavy. OK, Red, you carry on. That's a rope, boy. It fits over your head nicely. Take over, man. This is the pitch, sailor. If by any unlucky chance that horse of yours, Shamrock, shouldn't win, and we should lose our roll, I tighten the rope around your neck, tie the other end of that anchor. Spud, tell him what you do. I just dropped the little old anchor right spang in the middle of the harbor. Now, don't anybody tell me. I think I'm beginning to get it. If little Shamrock loses, Red ties this rope around my neck, ties me to that anchor, and drops me in the middle of the harbor. Right? Check. What are you guys worried about? Shamrock will win in a breeze. And there better be a breeze. This is the third full course dinner you've eaten. If you keep on this way, you'll lose your appetite for sure. I'll eat a hundred dinners, Janie, if it'll keep you here talking to me. Uh, I don't think they have a hundred dinners in the kitchen, but I'll ask. Janie, being in love makes me awful hungry. Oh. Whatever he offered, I'll double. Behind my back, eh? Remind me to cut you dead the next time we meet. I'll bring my own knife. Oh, gee. You better order something. The manager's looking. Breakfast, 9 to 12. Lunch, 12 to 4. Dinner, 4 to 10. Supper, 10 to 12. Doesn't leave me much time for my sub, does it? I'll take the full cost dinner for 85 cents. On second thought, cancel the dinner and give me the 85 cents. Have you seen the racing form or in it? <clears throat> It appears that little Aaron has a twin brother named Little Shamrock, and they're running him. A Shamrock, we suspect, by any other name, would be an Aaron. Keep the rubber on your bankroll, boys. See, they don't believe it. Plus, people never believe anything you tell them, except if it isn't true. Does that mean we get our money back, Benny? If he wins. If he loses, look for me at the bottom of the harbor. All right. Can you swim? We may have to spend the rest of our lives underwater. We wouldn't have to stay under very long, would we? No, just until we get used to it. Well, I don't think I could stay under longer than a minute. Doesn't give us much of a future, does it? Still, a minute's better than nothing, and uh, think of the money we'll save. Now, don't you go drowning, Janie, if she don't want to. The old, old story. A man's best friend and his best girl. She may be your best girl, but she's going to be my wife as soon as she says yes. Foolish boy. Tell him, Jane. I certainly hate to wake up this charming little gathering, but Miss Sweet has work to do. Oh, that's all right. I don't mind. I'm enjoying myself. Mm. And do you think you could bring yourself to enjoy some other customers for a change? Well, I'd like to, but I'm busy right now. I've got a lot of people to wait on. And now, if you two gentlemen don't object, I could use this space you're occupying. So nice of you to ask us, but we've got to go. Pardon me, anybody, but who perchance is going to pay me? Give this good man his fill of meat and drink and put it on my bill with the taxi fare. And to whom, may I ask, do I charge it? To experience. One, two, three. Those fakers, they're running them under another name. <laughs> 
I uh, won't be in for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, a very important conference downtown. are leaving the paddock. They're on the track now. They're off to the race. Lee the front. Shannon There goes the first race. I gotta check in. Any last instructions? Yeah, just stay on a horse, that's all. And have little Shamrock come in first. Then he'll be certain to win. You get the idea? Yeah, I get it, but don't forget, I'm riding in the race, not running in it. You better weigh in. They're looking for you. Good luck. And try not to come in ahead of the horse. Why don't you two get a place to watch and I'll join you? For good luck. You know, I'm beginning to dislike this animal more and more. Not only do I have to shell out for feed and rub downs, but I have to get him girls besides. How about wishing me good luck? With a little encouragement, I could be a horse. Good luck. With that much encouragement, I couldn't even be part of a horse. Now, don't get behind any of them other horses, and I'll see you in the winner's circle. I wish you had his confidence. After you've taken this, you will. It's just a vitamin pill. Do you a lot of good. Do us both a lot of good. Open wide. Maybe you won't be running, but you're certainly going to feel as though you were. Oh. Uh, uh, Brother Betty, uh, how does he look? But you'd like to get back to the plow, and maybe he will before the day is over. Uh, skis are around. I've got a few last-minute instructions. He went to check in or out, for all I know. Then keep him there. Don't try to be smart with him. He don't look happy to me. I think he misses his plow. He'll be happy today. Guarantee it. Good luck. Can't hurt you, pal. Take her myself. There goes little Shamrock again. He's broken away from the outrider and is dancing around the track. He looks like a spirited horse today. Very eager to run. I've been looking all over for you, High Life. I've got a hot one. Tell that shiver to go away, Slowpoke. Tell him I ain't forgot what he did to me at Hialeah with his phony tips. You heard him. Beat him. Tell him to stake me, Candy Nose. A couple of Z's. T tell him it's red hot. A horse called Little Shamrock. He's loaded. Ain't that the nag boy said with your stone with a new moniker? Mm-hmm. Tell the tout to get out while he can walk. All right, you'll be sorry, High Life. Don't say I didn't tell you. Get out of here. They've reached the starting gate. They're being jockeyed into position. They're having trouble with little Shamrock. Taking extra handlers to back him into the gate. He never acted like that before. What's gotten into him anyway? It ain't hay. I think they've got him in now. They've got him in. They've got him in. Finally, the flag is up. They're off and running. Little Shamrock stumbles at the start and trails the field. Patrick's boy is going to the front. Second is Lazy Dan. Then off of green top, Valerie in high retire. Into the clubhouse turn. It's Patrick's boy by a head. Lazy Dan by two lengths. Top, Valerie by two and high retire. There goes Old Shamrock charging fast to the inside. He's sixth. No, no, he's fifth. 
No, no, he's fourth. He must be full of vitamins today. He's fine. Into the back stretch. It's top battery, lazy Dan Patrick's boy and little Shamrock on the outside, still closing ground. At the half mile pole, it's still top battery ahead over high retard. Little Shamrock now third. Into the far turn, high retard is taking the lead. Top battery is second. Little Shamrock is pressing them hard and they're heading for home. Into the stretch, it's Little Shamrock making his bid and he's flying. What's getting into it? It ain't hay. Hmm? He passed up. Valerie's now head and head with high retard. It's Little Shamrock coming away. It's Little Shamrock by two. Little Shamrock by three. It's Little Shamrock all by himself. And as they cross the line of finish, it's Little Shamrock in a complete runaway. Taking so far behind his top battery and high retard. A four second and third. Lazy Dad was fourth. <laughs> Attention, ladies and gentlemen. The time was 1.43 and 3 fifths, setting a new track record by two and a fifth. Hi, Bert. Isn't that your horse? Congratulations. Used to be. Oh, too bad. I send you off with instructions to extricate Seaman Donovan from a horse racing swindle, and the next thing I hear, you've got another horse, and now you're racing him. It's very simple, Lieutenant. You see, this horse has got a twin. Twin? What twin? Little Aaron. Now, little Aaron... Just a minute. It... Who's Aaron? Well, he's the twin. Well, I mean, he's the other one. What other one? Shamrock. Shamrock who? I don't know his last name, but he hasn't got weak ankles, and for that matter, neither has Jane. Jane? Who's she? Is she anybody's twin? Not that I know of, but I'm all for it. On the other hand, there's too many Millicents right now. She's engaged to Bert Sedgwick. Merce and Jane Sedgwick. You're beginning to get it straight, and when you do, explain it to me. Now, Aaron's got weak ankles. So Millicent, who doesn't know about Shamrock, he belongs to Jane and his ankles aren't weak, uh, she wants Blade Sedgwick to give up racing. Only she thinks Aaron is Shamrock, and Shamrock thinks he's Sedgwick. Or, or is it Sedgwick who thinks he's Shamrock? Uh, uh, I get a little confused in there myself. No, no, please, no more. Do you follow me? That's enough. I don't want to hear any more about it. Just go away. That's all I ask. Just go away. Aye, aye, sir. Glad you got it cleared up. Hi. Hi. I hope you didn't mind my asking for you. Oh, of course not. Uh, breakfast is over. You'll have to order from the lunch menu. Oh, but it's the same as a breakfast menu. Oh, unless you want dinner, and that's the same as the lunch menu. <laughs> I see. Well, to tell you the truth, I've already had breakfast, and it's a little too early for my lunch. I actually came around to see you. Made a few inquiries and found out you work here. Well, you needn't have gone to all that trouble. I could have told you. Except I didn't know where to find you to ask. Well, if you found me, you wouldn't have had to ask. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Is that all you wanted to see me about? Uh, no, uh, I wanted to talk to you. About what? Well, anything. Horses. Uh, that was a great race little Aaron ran yesterday, wasn't it? You mean little Shamrock. Well, whatever you call him. I didn't know he had it in him. Oh, he had it in him, all right. A lot of things about horses you don't know, Mr. Sedgwick. That's open for argument. All you'd think about was winning, and there's lots more to it than that. There is? Of course, there's raising her and understanding her and believing in her. And... I see. Well, uh, maybe if my horses looked a little more like you. Frankly, Mr. Sedgwick, the way you handled the others, I don't think I'd care to be one of your horses. Oh, well, I've got to go now. Oh, wait a minute. You think they might sell him? Who? Little Aaron. I might buy him just to prove to you I know how to handle a winner. But I thought your fiancé didn't want you to own any horses. Well, uh, she doesn't exactly. Anyway, you'll have to ask Benny and Tim. They own him now. Bye. Bye. Ah. 
Hi there. Hi. Just the man I want to see. Pretty nice horse you got. You mean Shamrock? I mean Little Aaron. If you're talking about Little Aaron, uh, he can be had. I gave you 5,000. Sold. On one condition. I might as well warn you, I've been spoken for. But uh, state your proposition, I'll listen. For certain reasons, I don't want to be known in the deal. You keep title in your name. You got yourself a horse. Send a man around to pick him up. He needs a little training. Another race like he ran yesterday and he'll kill himself. Another race like that and he'll kill me. Money on delivery. Drop in again sometime. We can make a habit of this. And a nicer habit I've never encountered. That goes for you, too. Your orders, sir? No leading questions, please. Just uh, wrap yourself in a piece of lettuce between two slices of bread. Hi. Hi. I'll take this. OK. You just missed Bert Sedgwick. I just saw him. He bought a little Aaron for $5,000. Oh, fine. I told you he couldn't resist. You're all set. Don't forget, you get part of it. Oh, no, not me. What's the matter? Don't you like money? I'll get it anyway as soon as we're married. And that reminds me, how about setting a date? You've trifled with my affections long enough. People are beginning to talk. I'm not sure I care to be married to a sailor anyway. Besides, what would happen to me when he was away on a ship, for instance? And what would happen to me shouldn't happen to a husband. Maybe we'd better figure on settling down in some desert island with a few good books. Except who's going to have time to read? What with hunting, fishing, etc. Miss Sweet, please. Oh, I'll see you later. Couldn't you patronize some other place? What's the matter with this place? If you don't like it, don't knock it. Food's good, the girls are pretty, and the price is right. All they need is a new manager. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. I stopped by to see you and they told me you were through for the night. Can I give you a lift? Straight home? Of course. Don't you like anything but horses? Oh, yes. I like races, too. <laughs> so do I. Then, uh, why did you sell the stables? Well, uh, my fiancé would... Oh, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> if I were somebody's fiancé, I wouldn't care what they did. You wouldn't? Uh, if I loved them enough. Well, Millicent loves me enough, I think, in her way. Don't you know? Well, it's hard to tell exactly. We've known each other ever since we were kids, and it was always taken for granted that we'd get married when we grew up. Doesn't sound very romantic. <laughs> well, it isn't exactly. Millicent sort of bosses me around, and I sort of take it. It's always been that way, and I guess it's for the best, I don't know. Oh, not for me. I don't think anybody should be bossed. You don't? I mean, you don't? Oh. Pop always said that Jockey's in the saddle, but he's not riding the horse. They're sort of a team working together. That's the way I like it. Would you? Really? Uh -huh. Gosh. Somebody's going to be a lucky fellow. Who is? A fellow that gets you. Oh, him. I haven't even met him yet. Well, the fool better come out of hiding. Do you really think he's in hiding? I can't imagine what for, can you? Frankly, I... I can't. He better come out pretty soon before somebody else comes along. It's, it's awful hard to keep saying no all the time when... When you're so full of yes. I think I know exactly what you mean. Are you going to try to kiss me? I'm afraid so. Does it show? Uh-huh. It's been sort of creeping into my mind. I, um... Uh, hope you don't object. About creeping or doing? Both. Uh-oh. There you are, young man. The horse is now back in Mr. Cedric's possession. I can't say I approve. Okay. Much obliged.
Yeah, I'm sorry to see him go. I was kind of getting to like him. Like this instead, it's not so phony. The greatest ringer in history, and it had to happen to a couple of sailors. You got anything against sailors? Only that they stay out of horse racing. They're bad for the morale. And rest easy because we're out. Sedgwick's got a little iron and we got our money back. Yeah, and if you've got any elephants to sell in the future, you keep away from us poor sailors. Amen to that, brother. Come on, Tim, we got to get back to our ship and explain to the lieutenant how everything came out. If we can. Hey, hey, wait a minute, everybody. That ain't the right horse. What? Now, catch your breath, boy, and explain yourself. Of course it's not the right horse. It's little Aaron. Little Shamrock's back on the farm. Tim and the Pearl made the switch last night. Yeah, that's what you think, but the Pearl double-crossed you. Little Aaron's back on the farm with Angelo. The horse that you just sold was little Shamrock. Uh-oh, -uh. we've sold Janie's horse. Where were you when he switched them? Well, I was right here all the time. He must be a magician or something. Don't tell me he pulled little Aaron out of his hat. Now we got to figure out some way of switching him back again. There must be some angle to this we could work to our advantage. I have it. Run little Aaron under his own name, and everybody will think it's little Shamrock. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. Benny's thinking. <laughs> Your brain working, Benny? It's working. But it's not thinking. Hi, fellas. Hi, Hi Janie. Hi. Hello, Janie. Somebody told us you were out here. They said a pretty doll by the name of Janie, so we knew right away it was you. Oh, well, I, I hope I didn't take you away from anything important. Don't worry about it. We left the captain in charge. Oh, that's fine. I, I'm sure he'll know what to do. Yeah, this is his chance to see what he can do without us. Oh, your sailor friends are all so friendly. They've been waving at me and saying hello to me just as if they knew me. Uh, do they behave this way to everyone? Everyone has got what you've got. Let's move out of the traffic before we get stepped on. Okay, let's have it. Something happened? What's the matter, Janie? You in trouble? I get it. You found out about little Shamrock. Not our fault. The pearl double crosses. But we'll switch him back. Don't fret about it. What about Shamrock? I'd open my big mouth. We sold him to Bert Sedgwick instead of little Aaron like we were supposed to. But that's what I wanted. You did? That's what I came down to tell you. But little Shamrock's your horse, or am I confusing the issue? Pardon me, somebody, but I don't get it. Well, it's just that I'm sorry I promised to cheat Bert, that's all. He thinks little Shamrock's Aaron, so let him think so. And what do we do with little Aaron? I'll take him in exchange, and he can go on working for Angelo. It really doesn't make much difference when you stop to figure it out. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Well, it's simple. Bert's got little Shamrock, I've got little Aaron, you've got your money back, everything's fine. Hmm. Except that he's still in our names. Yeah, and we better get out of the horse business, or we'll find ourselves out of the service. <laughs> as long as you're in the Navy, I wouldn't worry about being out of the service. I I've got to get back to work now. And thanks for letting Bert have little Shamrock the way I want it. You just leave things to us, Jenny. Yeah, and we'll get them right, even if we have to do them wrong. Well, bye now. Uh, you better get back and help the captain. Bye. You thinking, Benny? And what I'm thinking. His workouts are terrific. I want you to enter him on the $100,000 Classic on Saturday. $100,000. My, I wish I was a horse. Keep trying. You're halfway there now. I will. If he wins, I'll take title in my own name and let you guys off the hook. I'll certainly be glad to be out of the racing business. Much easier being a sailor. And for your trouble, I'll cut you in for 5% of the stake. How's that? And uh, if he doesn't win? I'll give him to you as a present. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> You mean we'll still be in the horse business? More likely, back in the glue business. Now, remember, mum's a word till after the race. Shake. You know, sometimes I almost wish Aunt Gussie didn't leave me that money. Speak for your own half. Just left. Would you gentlemen mind stepping in here? Please? 
Nice seeing you. Likewise. I might as well tell you, Miss Millicent, I've already got a girl I'm kind of stuck on. I'll try to remember. This way. Who's that? Looks like I've seen him someplace. My father. This is his office. Won't you sit down? Now then, gentlemen. My fiancé, Bird Sedgwick, bought a horse from you, the title to which is still in your names. I admit nothing. That's right, we don't admit nothing because it's supposed to be a secret. Ain't it, Benny? You better take that foot out of your mouth before you swallow it. My foot ain't in my mouth. Is it? What's more, I know that you intend to race that horse in the handicap on Saturday, and that he may very possibly win. Are you by any chance trying to place a bet? Yeah, we don't take bets. We're horse owners. That is, until Mr. Cedric takes him back, then we'll be just sailors again. Why don't you show your tattoo while you're about it? Now? As Mr. Sedgwick's future wife, I'm resolved that he shall have nothing to do with horse racing in any shape, manner, or form. I think you already know that. Oh, you heard. However, if this horse of his should win on Saturday, I, I doubt very much whether he would be able to resist. A winner, I'm afraid, would be a little too much for him. And our marriage would be in serious jeopardy. You mean you'd call it off? I would. Proceed, you interest me. Rest is obvious. Little Shamrock mustn't win on Saturday. Are you suggesting? Precisely. I don't get it. Rest your weary head, partner. We're being asked to throw the race. But that ain't honest. That doesn't seem to have bothered you up until now. We'd like to help you, Miss Temple, but pulling horses is a little out of our line. As a matter of fact, horses are out of our line, too. After Saturday, we're quitting. You may be quitting in more ways than you know if Shamrock should win. Come again? You see, Admiral Temple, your fleet commander, by an odd coincidence, happens also to be my uncle. Hadn't you noticed similarity in names? I thought I recognized that face. There is a resemblance, isn't there? He's very fond of me. And when I tell him what you boys have been up to and what it's cost me, I imagine he'll be quite angry, don't you? Don't underestimate him. I heard he muddled for the atomic bomb. Yeah, we'll get life in a brig. If we're lucky. On the other hand, he may be lenient and only throw you out of the service. Kicked out of the Navy, that's worse than life in a brig. As a consolation prize, should Shamrock not win, and I'm certain he won't, there'll be a nice fat check for both of you in the mail Monday morning following the race. You know something? You're getting more like your uncle every day. You wouldn't consider having a shot right now. Save a lot of time and trouble, hmm? I have every confidence in you. How'd we ever get ourselves mixed up with Admiral's relatives, Benny? Who ever figured he came from my family? You better put your brain to work, Benny, or we're going to get kicked out of the Navy. I already put it to work. We got to switch horses the way we play and run little Aaron instead of little Shamrock. With his bum ankles, little Aaron couldn't win a race against a kitty car. Yeah, but what about Mr. Sedgwick? He ain't gonna like that, I don't think. Can't have everything. After all, there's a lot of things Millicent can do that Shamrock can't. And that goes for you, too. Hey, what's the idea? It's your car away, Chubb. Don't you want to ride? Oh, sure, thanks. Personally, I was thinking of taking a little stroll. Get in. Sure nice of you guys to give us a lift. You can let us off anywhere. Right here will do. Stay right where you are. You fellas got a horse named Little Shamrock. Yeah, how did you know? Hey, you hear that, Benny? We're getting famous. Just don't give me your autograph, that's all. He's a good horse. I seen him run. I want you should enter him on the handicap Saturday. Well, we were going to anyway, wasn't we, Penny? That's what I said you should do. I don't get it. Are you a partner, too? From now on, I am. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? We got more partners than we can handle now, ain't we, Benny? If High Life says he's a partner, chum, he's a partner. Get it? High Life? 
I heard of you. You're a gangster. Hey, Benny, these guys are gangsters. They ain't fit to associate with. We're getting out of here. Stop the car. We're getting out. I sure would hate to shoot a member of the armed forces. Yeah, it ain't patriotic. So sit still. Huh? Why don't you say something, Benny? I'm saying plenty, but not out loud. We're splitting the horse 50-50. Can take the purchase price out of the stake he wins Saturday. And a fair offer nobody ever got. Suppose you don't win. He'll win. You've talked to the other horses, I presume? There are only two other horses in the race who could win, Clover Kid and Sutton Girl. Clover Kid belongs to me, and Sutton Girl belongs to a friend of mine. And with a piece of little shamrock, you're practically in the race by yourself. What are the odds on you? Clover Kid and Sutton Girl are going to open the way for little shamrock in the stretch. Don't let nothing happen to stop him going through, because I and my friends got a big chunk on him, see, and we don't want to lose it. Just to make idle conversation, suppose little Shamrock should develop a sudden case of weak ankles and not go through. In that case, two ex-sailors who own the racehorse will be spoken of kindly by all and sundry who attend their burial. Do I make myself clear? Send plenty of flowers. I'm partial to a gay funeral. This will be the first time I ever went to my own. <laughs> Things are certainly looking up. We win the race, we get kicked out of the Navy. If we lose, we get killed. We haven't got a thing to worry about. You know something, Benny? I'm never going to buy another racehorse, especially if they're twins. Don't say that. I'm counting on it. We ought to do this every year, make an annual event out of it. No time at all we'd be in straight jackets. As a matter of fact, we'd look good in straight jackets. Green working, Benny? Sounds like it, all right. I got it! We'll kidnap the horses. Did you say kidnap them, Benny? Yeah, why didn't I think of this before? What are you gonna do with them after you kidnap them? Horses are awful big to hide, Benny. All we gotta do is figure out some place where nobody in the world would think of looking for a couple of racehorses. the horses behind the truck. You get rid of the sentry. Hey, sentry, there's a sailor down there trying to smuggle a couple of horses aboard ship. You kidding? Go away. Come and see for yourself. Go on, Amscray. Hear that? What did I tell you? He was right down there. I guess he must have beat it. Now look here, sailor. Don't go trying any tricks on me again, you hear? Now get going. Psst, psst. You sure this is the best place, Benny? Of course it is. Who'd ever think of looking for them in the brig? I don't know. I was lying in my bunk trying to figure out a certain problem which has been keeping me awake nights, involving a couple of horses. 
when I looked out of the porthole, I saw them pass by. Saw so what, sir? The horses. You feeling well, sir? I don't think so. Nothing serious, but I'll check in at the hospital in the morning. Bound to happen. Knew it would sooner or later. It's a matter of time. Gotta be more careful. You're getting hay all over the joint. I must be getting to look like a hay wagon. A couple of kids passed me and made a wish. How long we gotta keep them here? You know, I don't think these horses ever been on a ship before. They got a lot to learn. Just keep rushing. Everything's fine. High Life thinks Garvey kidnapped the horses and is chasing them all over town. Millicent is sending us a check, and we're out of the race business at last. We couldn't be sitting prettier if these horses were triplets. Don't even say a thing like that. I got my hands full with two of them. My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over... Want some place? Yeah, you? Yeah, sick friend. I got a sick friend, too. Must be an epidemic. Yeah. Don't wait up for me. I may be late. I may be late, too. My friend is awful sick. My body over. Don't catch anything. Too. Make a turn here, will you, buddy? I want to get rid of that guy who's following me. You told me a lie, Penny, and I'm never going to trust you again as long as I live. Fine thing. A fella can't go to see his girl without you tagging along. She ain't your girl. She's my girl. What are we fighting about? About Janie, I guess. A couple of real pals coming to blows over a girl. <laughs> no girl is worth it. Positively. Except Janie. You're right. We'll ask her whose girl she is, and if she doesn't know, I'll tell her. And may the best man win. Don't take it too hard, Tim. You were almost the best man. We partners again, Penny? Share and share alike. Which half of it do you want? Well, I... we ain't gonna cut Janie in no halves. Hello. Janie, didn't we have a date tonight or not? Better tell him who's the head man around here. Well, I, I thought I might as well kill two birds with one stone, so I made a date with both of you. What's the matter? Is there a shortage of stones? Well, I was sort of hoping to be alone with you tonight, Janie. I brought you some presents. Me too. For me? 
Flowers? Oh. Flowers. Candy. Candy. And a sleigh bracelet. And a sleigh bracelet. Must be an echo around here. Just what I needed. Now you got two of everything. If there were only two of you, all our problems would be solved. Hey, wait for me! I don't care how many Janies there are, I still want Janie. I'm sort of glad there isn't two of me. I get pretty confused with just one of me. <laughs> My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. Lover. Don't look now, but I think we struck bottom. Yeah. Maybe it's better for sailors, huh? Oh, no, it was wonderful. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry I was so gloomy tonight. Guess I'm not very much fun for you. What's the matter, Janie? If you're in trouble, you can tell us. Yeah, and we'll get you into more trouble. You can count on it. I guess I'm in love. Janie. Tim. <whistles> you better leave now. Some things between a man and a woman, too sacred to be heard by a third party. I'm in love with Bert. You are, Janie? And he's in love with me. Story of my life. Somebody's always in love with my girl, and she's in love with him. Well, he won't say anything. I'm kind of millicent. I was hoping little Shamrock would win tomorrow, and then she'd give him up and I'd get him. But no such luck. Some people get all the breaks, but not me. Better go in. Good night. I'm sorry. You know, I think we ought to run a little shamrock, Benny. You know what happens if we run a little shamrock? Either we get kicked out of the Navy or we get killed. Well, I'd rather get killed than get kicked out of the Navy. Oh, trying to take the easy way out, eh? We'll get kicked out of the Navy and like it, see? If other people can stand being civilians, so can we. You're gonna run a little shamrock, Benny? Of course we are. You don't think we're gonna let this poor little girl die of a broken heart, do you? What kind of a sailor are you? Well, don't I... answer me, I know. Come on. Ask me which is which, how should I know? One of them's gotta be Shamrock. They can't both be Aaron. Well, we better get the right one, cause the other one's no good for racing. Try calling him. Here, Shamrock. Here, boy. Here, boy. They don't know which is which themselves. We'll have to take them both. I'll get hold of the pile in the morning. He knows them apart. Man, grab him. What do I do with him? 
Shove him in the brig. Are you sure these guys are gangsters, Benny? They don't look like High Life's men to me, and they don't look like sailors either. We haven't got time to figure it out. For all I know, they may be a couple of brush salesmen. Let's get out of here before we meet anybody else. Drop something. They must have counted on staying overnight. We better take it with us. We can't leave it laying here. Right. Shamrock. Aaron. Twins. Benny. Oh. There's something ticking in it. Looks like they left us holding the bag. Better throw it in the drink. Yeah. What was in it? Those brushes must have been loaded. Come on, let's get out of here. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. I have an important announcement. Little Shamrock, the horse that was reported kidnapped earlier this week, has been mysteriously returned to his stables and will run as scheduled in the Gold Coast Handicap this afternoon. I'm sure glad they're off that ship. And you better come in first, because if you don't, Janie ain't gonna marry Bert Sedgwick, and that's who she wants to marry instead of me. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> he said yes! <laughs> Stop trying to get him to talk. We got enough trouble without a talking horse. You better hurry and see if you can find skis. It's getting late. All right. Hi, Dick. Where have you been? Undercover. High Life got a notion that I kidnapped little Shamrock and his boys have been keeping me busy. Look, I gotta get dressed. I'll see you right after the race. You don't have to get dressed at all. You're not gonna ride. What do you mean? Simply that I've got a couple of grand bet on Clover Kid, High Life's nag. Them torpedoes he sent after me told me it's fixed for Clover Kid to win unless Little Shamrock runs. You get the picture? Where did you get a couple of grand? You got a point, son. Credit. I talked the bookies into it. Now, follow me closely. Should little Shamrock run and Clover Kid not win, you can see my position. And frankly, I'm too young to die. So you do a powder. Little Shamrock doesn't run, and it's too late to get another jockey. Well... On the other hand, have you thought what's going to happen to you should little Shamrock run and not win? High Life's going to be awful mad. He's sort of counting on it. I'd hate to be in your shoes. What's in it for me? Half. You got yourself a deal. Now, come on, let's get out of here. I can't find skis or nowhere. What do you mean? He ain't in his dressing room or no place. He must be around someplace. You stay here. The pilot and I will look for him. Come on, kid.
Now, you look behind the stables, and I'll try the paddock. Hey, you guys gonna run your horse and artist late. Get him in there. Yeah, keep your shirt on. We'll have him there. Well, hurry it up. Yeah, well, well don't start the race until we get there. He wasn't in back of the stables. The man says we gotta have a little shamrock out there right away. They're gonna start the race without him. Which one is he? He's that one. Yeah, well, you take him over to the paddock and get him saddled. I'll wait here for Skeezer. Okay. He better come sooner. Your brother's gonna have to run without a jockey. Jane! Benny! Benny! Drop your anchor. Isn't it wonderful about Little Shamrock? I heard and came right on. It'll be wonderful if we can find Skeezer. We haven't got a jockey. Oh, my goodness. Come on, help me look for him. One of them's gone. Tim must have found Skeezer. But that Shamrock, he's still here. You sure? Of course I'm sure. I can tell him apart. This is Shamrock. You sent little Aaron out with his legs? He'd be lucky if he can stand up. They're on the track. Benny, your brain. Think of something quick. The horses are in the gate. All but one, a late comer. He's in, and the flag is up. Benny! How did you get here? They're all been running. I couldn't find Skeezer, so I rode him myself. You're riding little Aaron. If this is little Aaron, he hasn't heard about his ankles. Clover Kid is out in front. Satin Girl is next. Lady Sue. Little Shamrock. And Little Shamrock. <laughs> I, uh, I beg your pardon, ladies and gentlemen. I meant, uh, Little Shamrock. At the quarter, it's Lady Sue out in front. Second is Satin Girl. And third coming up fast is Little Shamrock. And right behind him is Little Shamrock. What am I saying? Take over. Something's happened to my eyes. There are two of them. Either I'm seeing double or they're both in there. At the half, Lady Sue is in front by an neck. Little Shamrock is second. Clover Kid third. And Little Shamrock. You said that. I did. I'm sorry. At the far turn, it's Little Shamrock in front, leading by a nose. Lady Sue is second. And Little Shamrock is third. How can he be third if he's first? Give me those. What do you want me to do, lose my job? There's two of them. Let me see. Here, give me those. Turning into the home stretch, it's Little Shamrock in front, leading by a head. Right behind him is Little Shamrock pressing him hard. It's Little Shamrock in front and Little Shamrock behind. No, no, I mean Little Shamrock first and Little Shamrock second. What am I saying? Slow down, let Shamrock win. It won't count if Aaron wins. He's not entered. Which is the break? It's a dead heat, ladies and gentlemen, a dead heat. What happened? I think we both won. Let's get out of here while we can still operate under our own power. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Hold all tickets. The stewards are inquiring into the running of the last race. Oh, <laughs> Millicent, of all people. Did you see them run? Weren't they marvelous? Bert, this is the end. It's that horse or, or me. You've got to choose. Uh, you mean uh, right now? Right now. Well... <laughs> You see, Millicent, I'm afraid it's this way. But you can't run quite as fast as he can. Ladies and gentlemen, the stewards have elected to disqualify both horses. The winner is Lady Sue, second, Patuki, and third, Satin Girl. What happened to Clover Kid? High Life, it appears, was a wee bit optimistic. He ran last. What do we do now? 
I'm acquainted with a boxcar on the Santa Fe which leaves this evening for the east. Shall we catch it? We better before they catch us. Pardon me. His feet get better pulling that old plow. You shouldn't have told me he was little Shamrock. Nobody could tell who was winning. I could hardly tell myself. Thanks to you, we're liable to be killed any minute now. What do I mean, any minute? What kind of double cross you giving me? I stand to win a hundred grand easy, and you throw in another horse! Just let me explain. Making a sucker out of me, huh? You had to buy a horse. If I ever catch you guys without them heaters, I'll twist you into a pretzel. You'd better be pretty soon. Yeah. Shut them! This is our party. Sure glad you guys showed up. I hope you like fish. We're about to meet some. Just a minute, fellas. I got something to do, and now's the time to do it. I told you I'd twist you into a pretzel. <laughs> Drawn, huh, Benny? All right, men. To the harbor. Uh, well, well, wait a minute. I don't get it. You will, pal. Just be patient. You see that rope? Yeah. And that anchor? Yeah. They're going to tie one end of the rope around our necks. Yeah. And the other to the anchor. Uh-huh. And guess what? What? Dump us into the bay. Oh, well, for a minute, I thought you said they were going to wait a minute. We'll get drowned. It's a possibility. Okay, break it up. They belong to us. Couldn't you let us drown them first? Please. We promise not to be long. I wish I could, but it's against regulations. They go back with us. Sorry. Come on, you two. What are you going to do to us, Penny? Hang us, I think. I don't see no rope. Maybe they found a way to do it without a rope. Stephen Lane and Donovan, step forward. and quick thinking which saved the ship from destruction at the hands of saboteurs who on the night of the 14th boarded her with high explosives and were apprehended, overpowered and locked in custody by seaman Timothy Aloysius Donovan and Benjamin Franklin Lynn. Them two guys with the bag, Benny. We could have been killed. The United States Navy hereby cites them for courage and bravery beyond the call of duty. Thank you. 